When it comes to hover effects, you actually have quite a few good options in Elementor, but they can feel a little bit limited and a little bit time consuming. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add cool hover effects such as move up, move, move down, move left and right, rotate, scale, make it bigger, smaller, jiggle, jiggle to any column, any section and any widget, including intersections. And I'm also going to show you how to make your life easier when working with the native Elementor hover effects for widgets such as images, icons and headings. So let's do it. First off, let me show you what you get for icons, what you get for images, what you get for headings, what you get for sections and what you get for columns by default if you're just using Elementor. For icons, headings, the text editor and images, if you go under advanced and then transform, you're going to see all of these effects and you have quite a bit of control over them. So there are certain limitations. You cannot, for example, change the opacity of text on hover. As you can tell, there's no opacity over here. There's no opacity under style either, but you can do so for images. So if you go into an image and you go under style, you're going to see opacity over here and then you're going to see hover opacity. So if we set the normal opacity a little lower and the hover opacity to one, we get something like this. And for images under style, you also get these CSS filters, which you can add on hover, you can make it blurry, you can change the brightness, the contrast, the saturation or the hue. So quite a lot you can do with images for sections and columns and intersections. However, you get none of these, you can only change the image or change the background color on hover. And you do this by going under style, and then setting in a color here or leaving it as is and then going under hover and changing color here. And you can see it changes when you hover over it, or you can do the same with images, add in one image for the normal state, and then one image for the hover state. And you get something like this. And these effects are responsive as well. For example, in this basic text, I added a hover offset effect. And there's a certain value here, there's a value of minus 40 pixels. And I can go into my mobile. And if I want to turn it off, I'm just going to type in zero. So it's not going to happen on mobile. And let's say I want it to be a little bit smaller on tablet, I'm going to type in minus 20. So it's less noticeable. And it's the same thing for these background images, you can change which images show up on which device, both for the normal state and the hover state. And you can, if you have an image here under hover, and you delete it, there is no hover effect at all. So you can disable that entirely on mobile if you need to. But you cannot make a section, column or intersection move up, scale down, rotate. So the way we do this better is by using a little bit of simple CSS. This enables you to apply any effect to anything, any widget, any column, any section. And you also get more control over exactly what happens where. And also, for example, if you have a lot of images or text and want to quickly change their hover effects, simply changing a line of CSS is much easier and much quicker than doing it the way I just showed you. Imagine having to change 10 headings per page for every single page you have when you could just change one or two lines of CSS. So here's the CSS I'm going to be showing and explaining to you. It's going to be available down below. So you can just copy and paste it in and change what you need to. So the next thing you do is just go into the column section widget you want to apply this to in my case, it is this intersection. And I'm going to go under advanced and at CSS classes. This is the class we need scale. And I'm just going to type in scale without any dots. And I'm going to press update. Now the CSS we need to add to make this work is this. I could add this directly over here. But that way, it's only going to impact this. And if I want to, for example, if I have a lot of images, and I want to apply the same effect to all of them, I would just apply the same class to all of them. And then I'm going to add in the CSS over here, preview the page or open the page then go under customize. And this is going to apply to the whole website. Then you're going to go into additional CSS. And now we just paste in the applicable CSS. And now if I hover over this intersection, you can tell it gets bigger. And you can make it smaller, bigger, just change the values to whatever you need them to be. And that's the scale version done. After you add that in, and you're happy with it, just press publish. So these classes are just an example, they can be absolutely anything you want them to be. And on your actual website, you're probably going to have them be a little bit more descriptive and specific. So the whole point of classes is that you get to select a specific element. And in this case, our specific element is this intersection. And by naming it scale, and by targeting the class called scale over here, 
we are essentially targeting this intersection. And then we are adding in our CSS. They just have to match over here. So if you have position over here, you, ha you have to have position over here, over here, and over here. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So I just went ahead and added in all of these. So we have our scale over here, intersection with the class called scale. We have our rotate intersection with the class called rotate. We have our change position. We have our opacity. But this time it's not on the intersection. As you can tell, nothing happens, but it is on the column. So only this column over here has this class. Over here we have uh, another scale. So the one that gets bigger or smaller, but it's applied to the whole section. So instead of just happening when I hover exactly over the intersection, basically it's going to apply it to the full width. Anywhere in here, the hover happens. And then we have a jiggle one, which I think is just a very, very, very cool one. Now let's get into the CSS. In the first one, scale, you can change these, make it scale more up, make it scale down. You can change how long it takes to, for that to happen. You can make it really slow or nearly instantaneous, but I like to keep it at 0 0.3 seconds because I feel the timing is just perfect. And then this part of the CSS, this is what I talked about earlier when I mentioned that you can control where this happens. So this part of the CSS basically means for screens under 767 pixels, that's the mobile breakpoint. So anything above that is a tablet and anything above the tablet is going to be a desktop, but anything below this value and the mobile website shows up. So we have our CSS set to anything under this value. So anything that is a mobile device, the hover transformation does not happen. For example, if we have a width of 360, which is definitely going to be a mobile device, none of these hover effects are going to happen. And you can set these values however you want them to. But if you actually do want it to happen on mobile as well, just go ahead and delete this part of the CSS. So we already did the scale. We, when it comes to the rotate one, you can change the degrees here, make it rotate as much or as little as you want to. Of course, you can change the duration for the change position one. This value is going to be the X axis. So left and right, don't forget to add in pixels or plus 150 pixels. And this one's going to be up and down. So if I get rid of the minus, it's going to go down. And then the opacity one works a little bit differently. We set the opacity to 0 0.5 and to one on hover. You can reverse these. So it's going to go from one to 0 0.5, for example, which is kind of odd, but you can if you want to. And then we have the jiggle jiggle, which is a little bit different than the rest, but you can combine all of these. Keep that in mind, you can combine all of these. So let's say we want this scale one to rotate as well. We're going to have to take this part of the CSS and add it right over here. And boom, there we go. Combining them with the jiggle jiggle one, you're going to get some cool effects. For example, let's let's say we want the jiggle jiggle one to not only scale up, but we want it to rotate for five degrees as well you're going to get something like this. And now to the jiggle jiggle one, I'm just going to add in the translate. So the one that changes its position and we get an effect like this with just a few lines of CSS, we get an amazing effect like this. And the whole point of this is you can play around, you can mix and match and you can apply them to anything. You have full control over this. If this video was helpful, check out this video next. I think you're going to find it very interesting as well. Drop a like and let me know in the comments below if you run into any issues and I'll do my best to help out. Thank you for watching.